comment from pure Koiro. Sorry, I, I don't sure how it pronounce your YouTube tag, but he says, I like the babble. Next time, have a beer or two in front of you and then babble as you chunk them down. Now, that would even be more interesting. And I agree, I haven't drank any alcohol since 1st of January 2018. First of all, I think I need to give a big thank you to all of you that has subscribed to my channel. When this is recorded, I'm closing up to 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for all the contributions that you have made. Not only subscribing to the channel, but many of you have also contributed to our community by writing a comments for everybody to read. And the best thing is when we start to chat within certain topics in the comments below. Thank you very much all for the contribution and thank you for the thumbs ups and likes on the videos. Apparently that matters when it comes to the algorithm at YouTube. Remember, I think it was over a year ago. Yes, I think it was in February 2019. I was visiting a very old friend in the north of Sweden, Arvidsjau, called Andreas Mao. And Andreas Mao is the founder and owner of Carpix. And Carpix is a company that provides all of you, us, with the um, spy photos of the new upcoming Porsches and other brands. And when I visited him, that was the first time I laid my eyes on the Boxster GTS 4.0. And back then, if you haven't seen the episode, by the way, just find it, type in 992GT3 and you will find that on my channels because that was the day when we also spotted the 992GT3. I love that episode. One of my favorite episodes, by the way, coming back to this car. When I saw the car the first time over a year ago in Arvidsjaur, it was equipped with a PDK gearbox. And that's a bit interesting for me because Follow me on this one. When I met Andreas Pröninger at a Goodwood Festival of Speed, right? He will actually, when I start to think about referring to that conversation could be a bit tricky. Let me explain why. During that interview that I made with Andreas Pröninger in Goodwood Festival of Speed last year, he told me and my audience that the Spider and GT4 will be equipped with speed shift. Apparently, that has been a topic on Renlist and other communities. And finally, I got confirmation from Porsche that no, the Spider and GT3 does not have the speed shift. I guarantee you that Andreas Preuniger most likely have tested that in any prototype cars that will not be in production. The reason, and this perhaps is the most important, the reason why it was not introduced to the GT4 and Spider is, well, simple fact that it will not pass VLTP if that was, a car was equipped with speed shift. Anyway, referring to the Andreas Pronia interview, the engine that was introduced in the GT4 Spider. it was quite clear on that that would be used in several cars. And fitting these engine with a PDK gearbox, it kind of puts it in a place where it's gonna be quite fast, I think. Because imagine a GT4 Spider with a motorsport chassis, because remember the GTS 4.0 does not have the motorsport chassis, even though if you buy this car and then, as I have done on my Cayman T, fit it with a, a Lean's Demper, well, well, it basically will not be that much of a difference when I come to think about it. I haven't calculated it, but perhaps it is cheaper to buy the 4.0 Boxster fit the Elin's road and kit, uh, road and track, and then it's only down to the, uh, well, it's down to the looks and the aerodynamics that motorsport provided. Hmm, interesting thought. 
I lost track. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, the um, chassis on the GT4 Spider is, um, well, it's, uh, I believe that it will have pretty much the same feeling as on my Cayman T. And having a PDK gearbox fitting to that, hashtag GT4 RS, it's going to be a huge, well, it's going to be a fast car. Remember, the, the speed of the PDK gearbox doesn't necessarily come in the acceleration 0 to 100, but the fact is that it could have the proper gear at any time. Remember my video when I had the, the GT3 manual um, driving experience at Yellow Rosa, and I, I explained why the manual gearbox is slower in comparison to the PDK. And with the PDK gearbox, as I saw in Arvidsjaur, that could actually be um, a killer in speed, if you ask me. And coming back to Proeniger, he also said that this engine will be fitted to several vehicles. Then I'm thinking about what happens with the 992 GTS and the 992 Carrera T. And I talked to my friend Yuan, you have met him when we spec'd our spider, my spider and his GT4. What if the 992 Carrera T has a natural aspirated engine from from the 4.0? That would be, whew, that would be amazing car. It has that 911 history, but it will be a heavy car. You know, this is a bit problem for me. And and, and uh, coming back to the 4.0 GTS, you see, I'm mixing around a bit uh, in, in the Porsche range, but. Look at BMW, they, they have the M3 and they have the M5, right? So if you look at the M5, that would be most likely, you know, approach towards the driver-focused customer, less horsepower, but much more communicated when you're driving. And then the M5 is for, you know, the, the, the people that need that extra manhood counseling and are more interested into, into power and being, you know, the you know, most expensive car on the parking lot, um, whereas the, I think the M3 will talk more towards people like me. And 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 the M5 is much heavier, and, and looking at the future of the, well, the automotive history, the cars will still be more and more heavier since the hybrid will be introduced in more or less all cars. We will most likely in the future see the GT3 with a hybrid uh, displacement. And then it will become very heavy. So in order to uh, lighten up the need of the uh, electric engine, they need smaller cars, smaller footprint, and that's where the 718 comes in to handy. And therefore, perhaps the GT4 RS will be the new driver's cars. Uh, I've said it so many times, and I think I expressed myself when I drove the 992 base Carrera that the amount of horsepower is good enough to have a blast driving. You don't need the Carrera S 450 horsepower. It's like a rocket launcher when you accelerate it because that car produces well it's, it has the same acceleration as my previous 991.2 gt3 so coming back then okay does it i hope you can follow me here what i'm trying to say is that i feel that porsche is trying to to move or create a new pattern of the lineup of models where i think the the 718 series will be more focused for people like me that appreciate driving and the 911 will be much more focused on the parking lot um have the most expensive car uh, kind of uh, manhood counseling uh, sessions taking place um so the problem for people like me is like oh i still need the manhood counseling and i want the igl car and hopefully the marketing department will make me look as good in a 718 GT4, GT4 RS, Spider as I would have done in a GT3 to cover up the manhood counseling bit. Do you follow me? Yes, we do! If that is true, the PDK gearbox will come in handy in the markets where, well, where they don't shift manual and 
back in the days I would say that's Europe ladies and gentlemen but that's not the true because America has uh, taken that proud first place in manual gearboxes looking at the GT3 50% of all deliveries in the US was manual whereas in well in in Europe there were you know just a couple of percentage. What are we doing in Europe? Are we losing the passion for driving in Europe? Taking the lead of the US, taking that throne from Europe. It kind of seems like it. And uh, applause to you, everybody uh, in the US for taking the leads in, in the true art of driving. We're going to try to catch up in Europe, but that is not the case. So for whom is the new 718 GTS 4.0? Well, to be honest, I am perhaps the only one person, living, breathing human being on the earth that thinks that the 718 should be have a four-cylinder displacement. And the reason for that is simple. Going back in the history books, the 718 has the possibility to represent the four-cylinder light sports cars and where the 911, 992 could take that flat six engine, rear fitted engine and have that history in the books in that model range and then the Cayenne and the Panamera covering the eight cylinders uh, displacements. Did you know, by the way, that the 718 had a special modern back in the 50s that was fitted with an eight-cylinder engine? But I, that was an exception, just like, just like you could, I think I've said it before, I'm, I am okay with having a flat six engine in the GT4 and the Spider, you know, creating that area around those two unique cars, but on the 7. 18, I appreciate the four-cylinder and the, the Cayman T that, that, that I drive is, I wish I, I wish I could explain this to people, but it is light. It's just about 1,300 kilos. Let's, 1,350, I'm, I'm safe, right? That's a light car, ladies and gentlemen. That's 996 GT3 RS number with the same amount of torque. So, that is something I appreciate in the Cayman T, and that's something that should be preserved for the 718 range. So therefore, what I think about putting the 4.0 engine displacement in the Boxster, well, I understand why they do it. It's the market, because I'm the only one that appreciates the four-cylinder engine. So this is, you know, for I couldn't afford a 911 syndrome and I want a mid-engine car. That's what it is. But then again, I'm a bit disappointed, not on this car, but on the Spider and GT4. And the reason for that is that that the Spider, in comparison to the Boxster, for example, is 15 kilo heavier in comparison. Ridiculous, if you ask me. I understand from a technical point of view why that is the case, because the Spider has a larger displacement of brakes. They are thicker, larger, that gain weight. It has the motorsport chassis that are totally different in comparison, which gain weight to the car. Uh, it has wider and larger tires that gains weight to the car. So I understand it from a technical point of view. But if, for an example, the 15 kilos that, that you put on the car, you need to find at least 17 kilos to reduce the weight. And that could be easily done. And I'm gonna explain how it could be done. Because if you option out the Spider or the GT4 without the P11 bucket seats, then this is the car for you. The Spider GT4 should be focused on driving. And if you want that proper drive, the bucket seats are more appropriate because it communicates. Remember, the video that I made about the 991.2 GT3 Touring, if you haven't seen them, catch it up. And I actually put a lot of energy together with Porsche Santi because there was something different between my club sport manual GT3 and, and the Touring that I was driving. And I jumped back and forth the car and I couldn't figure out what was the difference because it was a huge difference. In the end of the day, it was the 
seats where mine was equipped with a bucket seats and the sports seats was equipped in the touring. That's why I think they could have saved that 15 kilos by removing the sports seats, seven, adding the P11, decreases the weight by 17.3 kilos and bang, the car would have been one or two kilo lighter, but then they have, they should have, you know, they should have done it. They should have pointed out that this is a proper motorsport product, but on that bullshit, the most common mistake that I see when I watch other YouTube videos is that they say that it is a motorsport product. Technically, it is not. The project owner of the 718 GT4 and Spider is the 718 team. So I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. The only thing that the motorsport department developed on the Spider and GT3, uh, GT4 was the aerodynamics and the chassis. The engine, for example, that will now entering the 4.0 GTS was developed and responsible by the 718 team. But, there is always a but, the motorsport department was obviously supporting the 718 team. For an example, you will find the same strokes and compression as from the 4-liter G3 engine into this um, four, new 4.0 um, engine. So, it is a spectacular engine and it's I'm so happy that we, 2020, could uh, order a natural aspirated engine, even though it runs on three cylinders. Well, if you didn't know that, it actually it has adaptive cylinder control, just the, as the Cayenne Turbo, it, it shuts down the cylinder, so it's, it's, it you know, turns from, from two cylinders at one, so it works like this, and then it's switched over, oh, let's have the fingers right, yeah, well, you understand, it will alternate between two and one cylinder uh, between, when I think about it, that, that's quite complex situation. I hope I don't have to change engine in my Spider as I did with the engine failure in my GT3. I'm gonna try to keep me on this topic. My thoughts on the GTS 4.0. I think this car is made out of demands from the market. And I'm most likely gonna do the same as I was on the market, marketing department or sales department of Porsche. But I think the four cylinders displacement is a much more interesting car from a Porsche history perspective. I know that I'm gonna get hundreds of comments below here about that it should be a six cylinder engine in, in the Boxster and Cayman. And I understand that I have a different opinion and I understand everybody else because you get another tone from the engine. There are people that mostly appreciate mid-engine cars and still want that flat six, etc. So I, I, I understand it. Uh, remember, I bought my first Porsche when I was 19 years old. I have too much Porsche history going through my veins. So I cannot, you know, neglect the fact that the, the history books from Porsche. By the way, I collect these brochures. I have brochures back from the 90s. So, yeah, uh, this is uh, a precious thing for me. Sorry for jumping back and forth. Love the color. I, I, I must admit that strong colors are more interesting in sports car. I'm not sure I would, you know, select a Mamba green on the Macan, but but on the Boxster and Cayman, I really appreciate the possibility to really get with those strong colors. Uh, I must admit, I I have forgot the name of the green color. What was it? Well, then I have to check. Well, that's me, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have everything in my head. Python green. <laughs> well, thank you, Internet, for helping me to find the right word. Then again, the price. I'm not sure. It, well, the prices are different depending on which country you live in. But the price difference between the GTS 4.0 and the Spider <coughs> is about 7,000 euros in Sweden. It's like... 
uh, yeah, I'll take the spider. Any days in the week, it's like, you know, adding some options to the spider and, and you're done. And uh, on the GTS, you need to add as much. <clears throat> Actually, the prices are, at least in Sweden, pretty much the same. You you actually could option up. This is also a question I cannot understand. If you want the P11 bucket seats, right, you can option it on the 4.0. But why would you? Then you would most likely have a Spider and GT4. That leads me into the other problem, that I am a bit angry about the communication. One very common question that I get is like, okay, Janko, how did you get an allocation for the Spider and, GT, uh, Spider and GT4? Because yes, I had the opportunity to choose between the Spider and GT4. And I feel very honored about that. And I feel uh, privileged to be able to select. For me, it was extremely easy to select the Spider. That was, uh, you know, the the... Adding nature to the art of driving is something that I have been learning the last years and I want to take that to the next level and that's what the sp uh, Spider offers. And I didn't get an electrification for the Speedster so I guess I was more into convertible uh, at the time but I would still select the Spider. Uh, but the problem is that yes they will manufacturing the Spider and G3 three, three years, and I've said it 100 times before, that's this exact same production time as with the 991.2 GT3. My assumption is that we will have as many GT3 991.2 as we will have Spider and, and GT4. I don't think the numbers will be that much different, but these uh, GTS 4.0 will have a larger range. So I guarantee you, if you enter a Porsche center and say, hi, I would like to buy, a, uh, let's say, Spider. The chances of having the response like, oh, I am so sorry, we don't have a Spider available, but guess what? We have a Boxster 4.0. That's what they are creating with this number. And yes, according to the official statement that I've heard is like, yes, we will, we will manufacture this engine in, in quantities. And that's true. The engine will be in this car. And if we are lucky in the, in the, in the Carrera T and the 992 GTS, but the GTS, that, that needs to be at least... It will most likely, if that is the case, a detuned GT3 engine. But nevertheless, that's what I see in front of me. And I think um, I'd rather have more Spider and GT4 produced because I think that is a much better car in comparison to the GTS 4.0. I actually would appreciate the four cylinder. How many times have I said that now? But I think the six, six cylinder engine, the 4.0, should be allocated to Spider GT4. They should have increased that production number instead of adding it to another 718 range. Um, I think they should have, they should have made the um, Spider GT4 lighter. I think they should have, they should have introduced the Python green to the Spider and GT4. I like it. Anyway, I think that's it. I think that is what I, that is my initial thoughts about this car. I am uh, trying to get hold of one to be test driving it. I hopefully will get one. Uh, obviously, I'm trying to reach a, a Taycan as well to get a proper drive of that. I recently drive the Macan Turbo reviews coming on my channel. Um, I know from the numbers uh, on, on my statistics on my channel that everybody likes when I review cars. I'm going to continue to do that. Um, it takes a lot of time though because it's not just to jump into the car and review it. I actually take some time with the car to really experience it before I start to record with the camera. It takes a lot of time. I have test runs, I have tests that I perform, I have certain places where I drive the exact speed to feel the differences between the cars, etc. 
So I actually test the vehicle from my point of view, and that takes a lot of time. But I do appreciate that Porsche is lending me these cars and letting me use them to really test them out. So a special thanks to all my contacts at Porsche. Thank you for watching this babbling video. If you would like more of these babbling videos, write comments below. Um, not sure what the topic should be. Uh, perhaps I should address the 992 Turbo S that was introduced last week. I have only one question towards that. Uh, uh, Porsche's new strategy is to raise the prices dramatically. Uh, that at least in Sweden, the price differences from the 991 to the 992 Turbo S was extreme. We're talking about about three, 30 to 40,000 euros. That's a lot. So um, that is something that worries me a lot. I'm sorry, for me, Porsche isn't a luxury brand. It's a brand to experience driving. And therefore, I mean, take the 944 as an example. According to rumors, the Porsche family said, we're gonna build the sports car for the people. And, and that is a genuinely a gift where you want to share an experience with someone and make it available to more people. If this travel continues where Turbo S costs 250,000 euros, that's not for everybody, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, looking at the entrance model, that the price of those will go up as well since the top model are getting more and more expensive. Question mark from my side, and I question the strategy, what Porsche is doing from that perspective. But then again, there are so many rich people in the world, so that might not affect their sales numbers. In fact, they could produce less car, cars, earn more money. And I guess that's what it's all about, isn't it? Nevertheless, Thank you for watching. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Babbling, babbling, babbling. I think I'm babbling too much. I don't understand why, why, why it is interesting to listen to me when I'm babbling. I understand it when I traveling like let's take my paris trip for an example right i go to paris i see the formula e i loved it i had alan mcnish for crying out loud was on my channel nobody view it i put a babbling video about the 992 manual and it gets five times more views we're talking weeks ladies and gentlemen until i am going to drive my spider I, I, I'm not sure. I live out in the country and there is a huge farm just a couple of kilometers from where I live that, that um, well, let's put it that it's a lot of cows in that area. And since I have so many slaughtered cows in my vehicle, I think I'm going to take another way around. Feels, you know, the respect for the cows. Be the relatives for cry out loud in my car and here it is the p11 bucket seat should be mandatory on the spider and gt4 again i don't understand it why does it have the sport seats then then if, if i mean they know that we're gonna launch the 4.0 gts just leave it Oof, that that's where the sport seats goes The, the 718 might be, you know, that's perhaps the 718 is the new 911. Well, from a driver's perspective, at least. But then again, I drove the base Carrera. Ooh, it was nice, it was nice. It's, it's a different character, it's a different type of drive. It is, it truly is. So that means that you need two cars basically in your garage. You need, well, you need three. You need 
basically you need a Porsche 928. If you have not driven, the, my own Porsche 928 was the first Porsche 928 that I ever driven in my entire life. And it was meant for a bucket list. I'm going to do a video about this sooner or later. But it was a bucket list. It was supposed, I was supposed to own it just for a couple of months. And here I am, one year later. Oh, I'm a 911 guy for crying out loud. I shouldn't be excited. I'm more excited of getting my 928 out on the road again. Then I am on the spider. Oh my god, this does not work. What have I become?